Off we go. And welcome to the GP Llama channel today for something a little bit different for the weekend. We're going for a ride. But during this ride, I'll be showcasing an upcoming feature or a feature they're probably going to be rolling out. It's in the beta stream at the moment on the Garmin Edge 1040. That's spectator messaging within live track. I'm going to show you what it's all about here on screen. I'll take you through my ride and we'll just have a chat for the next 45 minutes. Now, I'm going to cram all the information down in the first few minutes. If you haven't seen spectator messaging before, or haven't been part of my testing on, uh, on Twitter that I've been putting out. But again, it's been a very long week in cycling media, hasn't it? And uh, I need to put some distance between me and a few failed reviews. So today, something that puts a smile on my face. Okay, let me explain what's going on here. I've got the Edge 1040 on screen, I've got the GoPro on the front, I've got the RCT on the back, so that'll pop up every now and then when a car comes from behind or a vehicle comes from behind. What I've got though is live track enabled. I have my mobile phone in my back pocket for this ride. And the new feature, which is in beta, is called uh, spectator messaging. I'll make sure I get it right, I've got two computers here. Now this was a feature on some wearables on the Garmin range, and I believe it was limited to LTE only. I saw it pop up a few weeks back in the beta stream. It's still in the beta stream, still a little bit flaky. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I wanted to show people what it was all about and get people's feedback by showing what it does and right there, up on screen, and just have a chat about a beautiful ride that I did last night. So, Wayrano, looks like Wayno, has warned me that it's a magpie 100 meters ahead. Now, what I did prior to just taking off and clipping in is started live track. Well, to be honest, I had to start live track seven times before this feature actually came up. It's been a bit flaky. And uh, there is a send message button now for anybody who has the link as we pass cars. So this is unauthenticated. It's out in the open if people have the link. Now typically when you start a live track, you send out to a number of people on an email list or you know, people that you know, and they'll be able to track where you go. But if you do send it out publicly, anybody can see the, the live track. Something to be aware of as well. If you've got uh, privacy zones on Strava, live track doesn't care about that. It's a different service. So if you're gonna be starting and stopping live track, don't do that from home. Anyhow, tweeted out the link. And people were starting to send me messages on the way here. Daniel, thanks for sharing this. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Daniel. And it, it beeps, it prompts you, just like any other warning or message or alert on your head unit, and then will disappear after a few seconds. Now, with this in its current state, uh, there's nowhere to go back and check the messages. So you can't pull down from the top and see notifications. But what it does, it gives people just the ability to send you some encouragement, spectator messages. And you'll see throughout this video, just things pop up. Um, and much later in the video, uh, you'll see some tests that somebody did in regard to keywords and things like that. Anyway, that in a nutshell, that's what it's all about. Is it any different to people just sending you an iMessage? Not really, but you don't have to know these people. They don't have to have your phone number or even email address. As long as you share the link out, people can type it. In. I'll put it up on the screen to show you what that text box looks, text box looks like. I'll try and do this all in one cut. So if I stutter my words and stumble or if little Maxwell walks in the room here, um, it's, it's effectively a live recording. Anyhow, that's what, that's what it's all about. Um, I quite like the feature because what it does is it enriches that live track experience and uses your mobile phone as the communication conduit or the communication enabler out to the rest of the internet. I mean, these days it's a connected world, everything's connected. Uh, the head unit there is already sending live track stuff, it's getting weather inbound as well. So this just adds another element to your um, live track experience. I think they could do a lot more with live track and I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, today's video, super chilled. I've got a drink, I've got a few more things to talk about here. But just enjoy the ride, kick back. Um, if you don't like me rambling on, which I'm pretty good at, 45 minutes, turn the volume down and just check out the visuals. It's a beautiful ride here in Ballarat. Uh, it's been very, very wet recently. Uh, the road I'm on just here has just been resurfaced. It was horrible the other week, but a few cars and trucks have gone across it. It's really flattened it out, but it is like premium gravel riding uh, coming up on a beautiful warm night. Um, what else? Uh, the camera on the front, GoPro Hero 9 or 10. I, I've got both of them in rotation and uh, 2.7K stabilized, uh, 30 frames a second with the um, max lens mod, which also gives it horizon leveling too, which means that this looks just buttery smooth. I can tell you it wasn't buttery smooth on the bike, running relatively low pressures. That's what you can see there on screen as well. 33.4 on the front, 34.8 on the back. That's a little higher than normal. 
I knew I wasn't going over anything gnarly, so I knew it was a bit of a flat ride, so I pushed those pressures up a little bit. So you'll see those alerts from the tyre whizzes uh, pop up every now and then. The black uh, background will take place on the, uh, those numbers. All right, we're coming up to the highway here. Um, other things on the screen, we have uh, my bike radar traffic, which has given me a vehicle count of 26 vehicles have passed me since I started the ride. Last one passed at 82 kilometres per hour. So other things that I cover on the channel, I actually use, and that's what I love about what I do. Uh, anything I'm actually talking about on the channel or you know, giving how-tos on, I use this stuff. I really do. Uh, Pat, let's go, Shane. All right, jump on the anchors here. Because no doubt there's going to be a truck or two. One, B double, two, car, and another truck. Now you might hear me sing throughout this video. I've got headphones in um, with the RCT715 on the back, Varia radar with the camera. Have that hooked up to the Varia radar app. I'm getting alerts. You'll hear the alerts beeping away, and that's the recording from the GoPro. But I'll also get them in my info earphones uh, while I was on the bike. This section of road here, I have a bit of history with this section just here. Uh, I took the comm with the tailwind a couple of months back. <laughs> it's a kilometre in length, uh, I'm not sure it'll pop up here, uh, but again, just absolutely supreme gravel. That's why I thought I'd just do a talk through video of the whole ride, it's just such a beautiful ride. What I'm doing here on screen, uh, you're seeing the Garmin sort of flip around. To get to the screen recording, to put the Garmin up on screen, You've got to be on your main ride menu and you press and hold, or your number one or your number one screen, or your first lap screen, press and hold that right arrow down the bottom there. I'm just trying to do it while I'm riding gravel so it's bumping around, bang, and it'll pull up that hidden screen there. On that hidden screen you've got a few different things to do. Screen recording on. Once that's enabled, the this is on the Edge 1040. I don't think any other device has it from Garmin. Once enabled that will record or save a screenshot every well, well, two screenshots per second, so every half second, 500 milliseconds, it'll save a screenshot, resulting in many thousands of files. So to get this up on screen here for this 45 minute ride or so, it was around five and a half thousand files, uh, which Final Cut Pro that I used for my editing really didn't like, so I had to chop it into two blocks. It was absolutely horrible, uh, but I do have it on screen showing you as a rabbit. movie, uh, a rabbit, <laughs> I'm yelling out rat. So yeah, there we go up the road. You might not see that on YouTube if it's pixelated. Got to make my own fun when I'm out riding by myself. Um, anyhow, what else can I talk about? So GoPro Hero settings, we've got that, the RCT. So I'll actually pop up the, the Vario radar and the, the image, from, image from behind me when it, the car comes up. From behind you also see that vehicle count go up, you see the absolute speed, last speed, etc. So it's kind of cool to see that happening in real time. You'll also see a status indicator. Oh, beware of magpies. <laughs> Thank you, Gioni. You also see the status indicator when uh, it's recording from the camera behind me. It's one of the feedback uh, feedbacks that I gave to Garmin initially with the camera is that you can have the rear camera on always, always recording, or only on when there's an incident, but then it continues to record for I think 60 seconds after that incident. You're never quite sure, is it on, is it off? You're never really sure whether it's picked up an incident in the last few seconds or a minute or so. Uh, I said in my review that I'd love to see a little recording status indicator. They've done exactly, exactly uh, what I requested, but they just put it on the right hand side of the screen. You'll see that pop up in just a few moments around the corner. Uh, it's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It serves a purpose of just being reassured that, okay, cool, it, the camera is recording um, after the, it detected a car coming. So you don't have to press the button or turn it on, or you just know what's going on behind you without having to look behind you. Left hand turn here, back onto some tarmac, um, which is kind of handy. I was testing two power meters, one of the power meters on this bike, you'll find out about hopefully in a couple of months. Heading uh, westbound right now. So if it's not already obvious, this is my gravel bike that I'm on, the Aspero, coming up to around two years old. Can't believe it's been two years since I've uh, done that build, and I've probably spent most of my time riding that bike and just exploring new roads. Haven't changed the chain yet. Again, another video, which is coming up soon. Um, using the Silka, I was using the Drip Wax early on for that. Still am, 
between hot melt waxes though, but that stuff, I'm, I'm a convert. I was totally against it, just like tubeless, I was against that on road until I got an air compressor and better tyres. But uh, he's me just checking that the screen recording was still on. Initially the screen record functionality to record all those bitmaps uh, only lasted five minutes. It now appears to be endless, which <laughs> when I actually had to, I had to clear out the space on my 1040, it had 10,500 files, and uh, the, I think it's a FAT system. I'm not sure it's FAT32, but it was FAT. File. I didn't really like having that many files. Uh, for the video editing side of things, I found it much easier to convert them over to JPEG too, rather than have bitmaps that reduces the size quite a bit. Beautiful section of road here. And again, speaking of the chain, which is just in still in top condition, no wear indication yet after 10,000 Ks. I've kept it very, very very well. I uh, haven't ridden in crappy conditions much. Well, there's a couple up the road where I go through a bit of mud, but uh, don't ride in the rain or anything like that. I don't need to. Um, I've got many indoor options to choose. So it's been uh, driven to church only on Sundays, so to speak. And yeah, over 10,000 k's out of the chain. All right, we should have a car coming up soon. As I rip into a bit of a steady state interval through here. Again, riding is always testing. There's multiple head units on this bike. I have the uh, 1040, obviously, and the 830, also, which is not shown. Uh, 5.56 p.m. Daylight savings here. Days are getting a little longer. Southern Hemisphere. Looking out towards Learmonth. Not a magpie. <laughs> A little bit of a northerly wind, I think it was a 12k an hour northerly, so the northerly will be coming from the right hand side to the left. I'll be turning left in a few moments and taking full advantage of that tailwind as I uh, rip into a section that I thought had a Strava segment. It didn't, I created one afterwards. Here we go, RCT 7.15, kick into action, I'll put it very small there in the back. Car pass. Okay, so lots going on here. So we have the footage from the back, which will continue on for another 60 seconds. The vehicle count went up by one. The last passing speed of that car in a 100 kilometer per hour zone was 104 kilometers per hour. He gave me enough room. He, she gave me enough room, so that was okay. Lighting wise, a little bit uh, brighter from the rear facing camera. As you'd expect from a, um, a safety camera, probably just to lighten things up a little bit. Uh, but that was uh, with the sun. I was looking into the sun with the camera in the front here, obviously, so. All cool. 558, 0% gradient. Ah, there's another question about the gradient lag on the Edge 1040. A lot of people are saying it takes about um, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, I'm still experiencing gradient lag with the Edge 1040. You'll see something else very interesting happening here too once I scroll through some screens. You see the three second power is only showing the power number, but if I scroll down, which I just have done on the Edge 1040, and scroll back up, bang, that changes to the graphical screen. So there's a little bug that has been persisting on the uh, across multiple firmware revisions on the Edge 1040, where that power graph, shown in the bottom of the map there, will just go to a single number, and then you pull the controls down, you pull the control widgets back up again, and it comes back to a normal one. Don't know, it's been reported. We'll see what they do. All right, Powell's Road, we're gonna hang a left in just a few moments. Uh, estimated distance to go with my uh, fitness was 136 Ks. Yeah, I was going pretty hard on this one. Heart rate 177, yes, it was a good night. Multiple times here, I just checked that the screen recording is still on because uh, no messages were coming through and I was, yeah, I wasn't sure if I had to restart that. Uh, this is the second attempt actually at doing this kind of video. I did arrive the other night with a few messages coming through. Actually, it was the other day and I had a few messages coming through. Uh, I thought the screen recording was still happening and it was absolutely hilarious. I had a certain DC Rainmaker sending me through uh, fake turn-by-turn -turn navigation messages. <laughs> and it just cracked me up. So he was tracking me live track with this and uh, had his name as like turn ahead, like left turn in 200 meters or something like that. So he was actually, he knew what was going on. He's, he's obviously used the function before and knew how it operated. Now his was a little uh, 
a bit of a, like, I mean, in all seriousness, a bit of a realisation of um, the privilege that we have if we're out on a bike of a night time just playing with this beta. Um, somebody from the Ukraine sending me a, a hello from the Ukraine. Uh, sorry, Ukraine, not the Ukraine. Which, yeah, just got me thinking. Got me thinking about the, um, yeah, the, the, I mean, look at what the country's going through at the moment over there versus us being able to just piss around on bikes and enjoy stuff around on bikes indoors. Um, so, yeah, anyway, it's just, uh, just open my eyes a little bit to appreciate what we have. So thank you for the message from Ukraine. Now the fun starts. We're going tailwind, downhill, and no power. So a bit of recovery through here. Uh, I really put the gas on just over the freeway, so I'm looping back over the freeway. Down Powell's Road, past the, uh, the winery. Which, if my drink of choice is Pepsi Max, so the winery is a bit lost on me going past. Uh, GoPro Hero 7, uh, GoPro Hero 7, so GoPro Hero 9 or 10 in 2.7K, he's looking absolutely brilliant. It'll be compressed on YouTube. They grab videos and run over them multiple times with multiple different buses and trucks and things to squash that co uh, content down. Um, but looking at it here, it's full resolution, looks absolutely beautiful. I can even step that up to 4K 60, which looks even smoother than this. Not quite harvest time. Still very, very wet out here. Typically this time of year, things are really, really drying out. We've had heaps and heaps of water and heaps of rain. Um, one of the very few rides I've got out and uh, haven't had to clean the bike too much afterwards. Uh, but I try and pick the days to go out. All right, coming up to the freeway or the Western Highway again. Um, if you're playing your geography game, Melbourne is to the left of the screen here. Uh, Adelaide to the right, if you ride a very, very long way to Adelaide. I think I get a clear run through here. It's on the Powers Road southbound. Not many messages coming through, so when things are, aren't popping up, I'm thinking, oh, they've been delayed, they've been queued. I've had a, a couple of instances where I've had this messaging system on for live track, and once I stop live track, then I get a flood of messages coming through. So something's backing up at the server end. And that's exactly what I was testing. Hey, there we go. <laughs> Learning to try. Don't crash. I'll try not to because there's a car coming soon. But it's important these messages go out almost instantly. If they're backlogged, if you're in an event and someone's like, yeah, you're doing really well at this part. It's uh, somebody from Salzburg currently traveling there. If you're in an event and it's delaying messages or you're not getting through, that's a bit of a problem. Uh, car up. Again, another just absolutely premium gravel road to ride on. On a good smooth day, you can probably use your road bike. But it's nice having uh, 40 mil tires on this. These are the Centrino M's. Pirellis, I believe. Mr. Magpie. I see you proud of the magpie. <laughs> Funnily enough, there was magpies around here just a few weeks back. <laughs> it's also making me laugh on the bike. I think magpies are finished for the season, so no more uh, no more videos. I think I've put out my one magpie sweeping video for the year. I would have loved to do have done a few more of those, but uh, I think I got enough views on that one. It was the double attack magpies. They were brutal. They were brutal. They stopped pretty early, those ones. There's a few others that lasted a few more weeks swooping. But everything's fine now. There's no need to worry if you're going out riding bikes in Australia. You saw, I think, the. Um, was it um, Everdepole got swooped or was it um, Vanderpole? He got door knocked. But uh, different magpies when they're over for the world chance. Alrighty, over the next road, and oh no, the hammer's already down, so I'm looking at my power numbers there. 300 plus, 185, heart rate's up, let's go. Trying to pick the smoothest line there between potholes. Now, other updates on this. Um, so you've seen, obviously, 
the little icon that pops up on screen for the recording of the RCT. Again, more cars will be coming up this road. Uh, once I turn left again, so the little recording icon pops up. Um, there's some Shimano DI2 adjustment mode support coming up in the firmware. That's uh, not really relevant here than I'm running through our Maxis on this bike. Live event sharing is another one coming up in the betas. There's very, very, very slim pickings of what these features actually do. Even this live, uh, all I've got here in the, in the um, change log for the live uh, spectator messaging, added support for spectator messaging. That's all it says. No trains, we're good. Now, with the hammer down and the tongue hanging out, I kind of hit the wrong line right about here. And I wasn't too happy with that, uh, covered in mud specks. I'm usually looking for the, the shiniest line or the smoothest line, and I thought I could see it as I've just naturally gone towards the water, and thought, well, I'll go around it a bit, I've still hit a chunk of mud. So that wasn't fun. Back through here. No kangaroos on this ride, no emus, no Aussie wildlife. So if you're looking for that, uh, not in this video. I saw some roos the other day out at Creswick Forest. They were too far away though for the camera to capture. Tire pressure bounces around a little bit. 33, 34.6. Tire pressure is influenced by your elevation. So if I go for a ride and go up hills or down hills, uh, tire pressure will change. Also road surface uh, affects the tire pressure. Went through a water crossing a couple of weeks back. There was a road close sign not too far from here. I thought, okay, it's an invitation. Why is the road closed? And it had about a few good inches of water for a couple of hundred meters. And it was on a road like this, so the, the surface was okay. It was just covered in water. So I was like, no, I'll pedal through that. Pedaled through. And the uh, PSI dropped. I think we dropped about two PSI back and front. So pressure dropped going through the much cooler water. Fascinating to see in the data, and I couldn't figure it out. And I was looking at my data after the ride in Connect IQ, and I could see the tire pressures, tire pressures, and I'll go up and down again based on uh, road surface temperature and elevation. But there was one distinct part where both tire pressures went down, front and back, and came back up. And I dug around, dug around, like whenever I see an, uh, an abnormality, is it? Uh, something weird in the data, the unexplained, I try and dig around and find out what's going on. I do that with power meters and smart trainers. But diving into exactly why I had a tire pressure drop, um, I remember that's the water crossing that I did for a few hundred meters. The next question is, is it the tire pressures itself or was it the tire sensors that were affected by that? Um, I'm gonna do a heat test on those. That's on the cards, because I'm not quite sure whether it's just, if it's, if it's just the sensor heating up and heating and, and cooling and that the sensitivity of the sensor being influenced or influencing the readings? I don't know, we'll find out. Always question the numbers, always question the data and double check. But I thought it was interesting. Nevertheless, all right, final push to the line. Sold a little effort here. I think I averaged about 39k an hour here. I don't wanna make a liar of myself by showing speed on screen, no. Sold a little effort there anyway. And winery on the left, back on two. The Avenue of Honor, Archer Victory finishes. Here, one of the war memorials we have in town, it's 25 k's long or so, I think maybe 20 k's from town. And because I'm on my gravel bike, let's go full sand. And this GoPro keeps, this is over the grass, bumping around. The GoPro is just locked in, rock solid. There we go, okay, RCT kicked back in. Recording icon up there. On the screen, cars coming. Uh, the RCT has a pretty wide band of vision, wide uh, scope. So we'll be picking up cars as they pass on the road there to my left as I roll back into town. The condition of this path is looking pretty crappy lately after all the, um, all the rain we've had. Again, pressing on those buttons to make sure that it's still recording the screen. Um, I was quite surprised that it continued to record all these... Uh, bitmap file so that device is saving oh, it's definitely one of the few thousand bitmaps for the edge 1040 screen recording uh, the number one screen recorder has to be well actually I'll put it two in the same bucket the hammerhead 
Uh, you can side load, I think it's AZ screen recorder, so you can record the hammerhead screens for now. That may not work forever. And on the element, uh, it's the, I think the Bolts 2, Rome 2, definitely have uh, the screen recording on them. So a screen recording option, that saves into an MP4 file, which makes things really easy for video editing. Now, Hughes is on board. Hugh Hughes, um, I guess some bots could spam this form. No verif, no verif. So there's a problem with the messaging, no verification there. Whether Hughes has shortened the message, I'm not quite sure, but it does truncate things like no limits. Correct, so here's a section where a few messages are coming through from Hughes. And I clean the camera. Lots of water there. Yep. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't have voice reply. You can turn off spec data messaging at any time too. You can just drag down from the top menus from the control widget, hit stop, and that will actually remove the send message function up on the live track. Again, I think they could do a lot more with live track. I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. Maybe my Festi 500 videos, maybe before. We'll see. But I think live track is very, very cool. And now we've got all these devices. I can make a lot better use of it, I think. All right, hum. Nice to get off the freeway, or the highway. Or major road, anyway. Just for a cruising night like this. Bit of a side cross tailwind here. Tire pressure's dropping, 33, 33. Um, my elevation is going down, I believe, from there. Um, this pathway would be a lot cooler too. It's a different surface than the other rocky stuff that I was in. Heading west, oh, sorry, east, east, almost southeasterly, back in towards Ballarat. I should have the direction on screen, but I don't know the data field. Very right up pretty much permanently on for the rest of the ride here. It goes off a few times. Um, there's no cars for up to 60 seconds or so after the first uh, detection. Now, that there is an iMessage coming through. So it appears differently. Should I pick up chips and stuff for you guys? There's Vaughn, Mrs. Llama, with Little Llama. They were out uh, doing a few things as I went out for this hour long ride. This is around tea time or dinner time. Now, with an iMessage coming through, I can then pull down from the top. I didn't do it here, but uh, just to explain, I can actually pull down from the top and review the missed messages or received messages. Now, that's not something that I can do with these spectator messages. I'd love to see the spectator messages also give us the ability to do that. Um, so even if you miss the message, you can go back and see it, or even just have a, a list of uh, messages that have come through. So scroll like one of your screens, one of your screens across, and just have all your supporter messages. Let's say you're doing a long triathlon, you're out for a very, very long ride, and you, don't, you just couldn't care about your numbers anymore. Let's just say, what's my motivation message? And you can just look down. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I was having a few laughs. They don't. I think I, at this time, I, I, yeah, you can hear me whipping out the phone to take a photo of that to post on Twitter as I was riding along. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm quite sure what tunes I was listening to. Oh, you will see it up the head, though. Uh, I do pull down the control, music control widget. Twenty-eight minutes in. How have I spoken for twenty-eight minutes? <laughs> that there is. <clears throat> it's something they'll need to address in some way. Again, it's only people with this live track link who can see this. Live track links are big, long, whatever they are. Uh, you're not going to be able to guess a live track link, so you're going to have to have a live track link. But I guess if someone tweets it out and starts spamming like that, or maybe puts a bot watching Twitter, if Twitter still exists after tomorrow or this week, um, watching for those links. Oh, I won't give too many 
bot administrators too many ideas, but let's just say you put a, a watcher on Twitter, watching for people to share out the word live link, and that bot then grabs a hold of that live link and just starts sending spam messages. I can see that happening. Um, mm -hmm. mag 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 magpie. <clears throat> Daniel from Germany, I'm guessing, it does show uh, emojis. Little eagle there. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's a risk there. Should Garmin maybe put that behind an authenticated wall of Garmin Connect users? Should it be that only Garmin users or Garmin Connect um, users are able to send these messages? That would then add one further step for the bots to stop the bots. Um, but if let's just say you're a Wahoo user, you're a Lazine user, you're a Hammerhead user, um, you don't want to register for Garmin Connect just to send me a message. So there is a beauty about that. Um, and I guess if the abuse gets too bad, I can just scroll down to the top, disable this messaging. That will work. Um, but looping back to what I started off talking about, I, I do think live messaging or live tracking could be really further expanded by quite a lot to include all of the data. Tire pressures, um, other information, even including, and I'll discuss this in another video, um, the information coming from the RCT715. Why, do, why can't it take a photo and then upload that to the cloud straight away? Um, it's a safety device. And let's just say I do get run over by a car and the camera gets run over as well. It's useless. Just checking if the screen recording is still on. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lance. So being from old school IT, we're always thinking about this. And when I posed this to Vaughn, who's also from old school IT, Mrs. Lama, I said, why, why couldn't we have the cameras just automatically stream what it's doing right now? Why not put that up into the cloud straight away? And Vaughn's like, oh, imagine the bandwidth. And I'm like, that's a 10 year ago problem. Well, it's a five year ago problem. We've now got 5G, 4G, connectivity is not a problem. What about, where are we going in five years time, in 10 years time for this? Why can't we have devices that within the live track stream the ride? Battery's a problem, sure. But what about a still image? So from when a vehicle passing is, say, within the last 30 metres, why can't it upload that, um, that image? I mean, it's, we've got to start thinking about where, where, this, where is this stuff going in five or ten years. Speaking of music, Pearl Jam is on. Um, music control added to the Edge Explore 2. I just stumbled across that feature. Actually, I was over at the um, DC Rainmaker HQ when I was mucking around with the uh, Edge Explore 2 mid-year. And I was just mucking around the configurations and I, I found the music. I didn't even know. It's not, not a big addition. I think it's an important one. I, I like it. I listen to podcasts and things as long as, as well as having the um, Vario radar alerts in my ears to so know what's coming up from behind me. But it's how you know how far you are through a podcast, where you are in a song. You can skip, pause, do whatever. So the music control is, uh, is neat on the 10.40. I'm not quite sure if the music control hit the um, 10.30 or the X30 range. It may have. It may have. I'll look into this at another time. All right, almost back into town. I appreciate those coming along for a ride today and watching the video. Again, as I said, something a little different. And uh, good to get out on the roads and away from the indoor equipment, which, look, let's, <laughs> let's call a spade a spade. It doesn't take the weekend off. I, I broke a few things this morning, which really shouldn't break. More on that soon. But that's what we all do it for. It's, it's about getting out on bikes. We, I cover a lot of technology on here. I, I get, uh, I'm quite critical of a lot of things, but at the end of the day, this, this is what it's about. Nice warm night. Nice roads, things working, friends sending messages, uh, cracking me up. Uh, thankfully, Ray was still in bed, so uh, <laughs> I wasn't almost falling off my bike, cracking up at his uh, fake turn messages. <laughs> All right. Little Maxies. It's a weekend, mate. Little Maxies, honey. You might hear him in the background. Hey, Max! You want to come say hi? Yeah. Come on, man. Dad's riding bikes, mate. It's all right. Yeah. Dad? Yeah, mate. What, what you got? Oh, thanks, man. What? You want to come see bikes? Come on. You got, you're eating something, are you? 
Here we go. Dada. Yeah, mate. I got some bread. You got some bread? Thanks, man. Hey, footpath closed. What's dad doing? Jump. Jump, dad. Uh, am I what, sorry? Did I, run into sign? I didn't run into the sign, no. Why? Oh, went around it. Hopefully we'll see those fixed up soon here in Ballarat. It's quite a few trails that have been impacted by the recent floods and, and weather. Oh. Isn't there, Max? It's a bit wet outside, isn't it? Bit of rain? I mean, yeah. What's the weather like outside, mate? Can you give us a weather report? It's going to rain soon. It's going to rain soon? What about the clouds? What would you, if you were a weatherman, what would you tell the people the weather looks like? Don't know? <laughs> you don't know? Stinky butts, stinkies. Stinky butts, right. Not partly cloudy? No. No? Typically it comes out with partly cloudy. I think they say that, not, partly cloudy? Is that the biggest one they say on the telly? Partly cloudy? Stinky butts, stinkies. Mate, you, mate you, you, you're, bringing the, you're bringing the channel down to the gutter. Come on, man. Come on, man. It's usually me bringing the channel down to the gutter with my frustrations. Mm. Oh, mate, look, footpath closed. What are we going to do? Straight around. Are, now, you, uh, are you from Grandma Didders? Ah, uh, Grandma Didders is not too far from here, mate. Hi. Check it out. Dad's going to jump the Grand Canyon of uh, bike path holes. Oof, that was a big one, actually. I wasn't quite sure I was going to get the front wheel over that. New estate going up there on the uh, right. Another road closed. Oh. Um, That's just a serving suggestion, mate. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, what's the weather like on the, the video here, mate? Can you tell us? It's going to rain soon. Um, it's going to rain soon there too, is it? Um, God, I hope not. It always rains. Dad? Yes, mate. I think I'm dead. Yeah, I know. I've got this. Oh, Canadian llama fans, we are not just sheeple. So, messages still rolling through. See, Max? My friends are sending me messages. Because I asked them to. We're, we're testing spectator messaging. Why? Because we don't know if it's going to work or not, mate. Stinky butt story. Mate? Yeah? What's this on the screen? Susie, look, what's that? Scooter scoping. Scooter scoping. Dad, are you ready to grab a dinner? Oh, I'm going to go past KFC first, mate. Yeah. Are you in Ballarat? Oh, we are in Ballarat. Of course we are. In particular, we're in, I think this is Lucas. Did you know that? Hmm? Uh, where's Grandma Diddy's? Well, it's up here. We might be going past it though. But that'll be off the path soon and we'll begin up on the road. Roll back into town and we'll see the Arch of Victory up the road, won't we, Max? Yeah, traffic, traffic count going up, vehicle count going up. A few messages going to pour through in a minute. Oh, Maxie, what's coming up? What do you see, buddy? KFC. Yeah, man. What do they sell? Chip, chicken nuggets. <laughs> oh, buddy. Was that a stop sign? No. Oh, good. Good, thanks. Thanks. I won't get in trouble. That was a giveaway for the purpose of this video. All right. Back on smooth roads. Putting out some good power here. Dad, are you on your gravel bike? I am on my gravel bike, mate. Thank you. Yes, I am. It also goes on the road too. Not as fast as the road bike though, but gravel bikes can go on roads. Nice and comfy on the road. What kind of chain do I have, Max? Wax one. Yeah. Bingo. We wax the chain, don't we? Yeah. We might see the temperatures go up in the tyres too. Oh, Maxi Miller. Oh look, two dogs. Marzi for joke. Alrighty. Ah, uh, yeah, Elon Musk is sending me messages there. Great feature. I think I have to implement this too. <laughs> In live track 2.0. This is a funny Stingy one. Butts. Maxi, Stingy. we only want hardcore riders to stay and hit a thousand watts. Alright. Mate, I'm going to have to ban you from the channel. Go on, go see Mama. No. Mama's got more bread for you, mate. Yeah, she does. I want to stay here. You want to stay here? Yeah. All right, let that me... That was very f***ing red. Uh, let me just beat that out. Uh, my critique of somebody going through a red light. Oh. 
I, I missed this one out in the road. What did the traffic lights say to the other? I missed this joke. Uh, that someone was sending me through it, Max. Don't look, don't look at me, I'm changing. That was a good one. Thank you, Dee, for the joke out in the road there. Hey, Max. Max, Max, how old are you, buddy? You're three years old, yeah? And did you go swimming today? No. Swimming lessons? No. You sure did. Whereabouts do you go swimming at your swimming lessons? Oh, Max, motorbike. Cool, ma'am. Saturday afternoon, honey. Where are we going? We're going home. Why? Because we're done, buddy. We are done. We've shown everyone the feature. Um, we're asking people for feedback in the comments. What do you think about it? Is it worth it? I think it's pretty cool. I think it has potential. It needs a few little refinements. Mate. All right. You get out of here. We're back, we're back in Alfred now. Come on. Right, Max, what car was that? Two cars. Two cars. All right, I'll play a game with you, mate. We could play along to watch the video. <laughs> Max, can you pick... No, that was the Peppa Pig song. Can you pick the car brand, the next car brand that we see? I'll give you a high five if you can pick the car brand. Uh, one of many motorcycles. Max, well, come on, man. Get out of here, <laughs> nugget. Like a motorcycle crew or club, I guess you would call them, in, in, town, in town this weekend. All right, get out of here. Come on, man. All right, as we roll down, I will be back in just a moment. All right, I am coming back. Just well, give me a sec. Uh, all right, uh, yeah, if you know Ballarat, half the roads are closed around here because there's potholes everywhere, and this is one of them. Rather than actually fix the pothole, they just closed half the road for the last two or three weeks. That's why we ride gravel roads. You never need to be sealed. Camera back on. And rolling in. Anyway, look, let's start wrapping this one up. I think we're a few minutes out. Let us know what you think of the feature. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you've hung around, just some nice visuals here. Going for a ride. I think the feature is good. I like having it. Um, I do like receiving the messages. It is very, very flaky to start. So I'm having a lot of trouble getting it working. Uh, the fact that it works without having a, an, an LTE head unit, but you do have to use your phone uh, as the data uh, connector. Um, I think that's handy. Um, a lot of people, I guess, might not like this. You can turn it, if the option is, uh, it can be disabled at any time, or not enabled at all when you first start your live track. Um, what else? Um, I love the ability to just take a photo with the rear camera, even the front camera, and upload that to your live track so people know where you are. Uh, but you can also have real time, a lot more real time information coming through from, uh, from live track. All right, how far we've got? We've got just a few minutes left as we ride through. Anyhow, thank you for spending, uh, well, my Saturday afternoon um, with me watching this. Hope you've enjoyed the ride and uh, just a bit of a chat about the technology I'm using. Just checking here. See, stop live track. I can end session right there. Done. Uh, that's the handy thing about live track on these uh, edge devices. You can just pull down from the top and start it at any time. Pull down from the top and stop it at any time. Sometimes you need to start and stop your ride. Um, you can have it set to emails to go out uh, to your contacts as well. So if I'm going out and just taking a different path than what I told Ron I was going on, scroll down, hit live track, go done. It's just configured. Absolutely brilliant. Avenue of Honor and the Arch of Victory right there. Just a monument here in town. And into the coffee shop. Which is unfortunately closed at this time of day that I was there, but a good place to stop the ride. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, let us know your thoughts below on this new feature.